All right, let's go ahead and get started. So uh, I'm Richard from the gRPC project. Uh, this talk is going to be a little bit different. Uh, I'm going to be talking about the gRPC quote unquote standard library. So for those of you who haven't used it, gRPC is an RPC system, a specific kind of messaging system. It gives you a nice way to evolve your API schemas over time, and it really excels at microservice to microservice communications. So this talk is going to be about several add-ons for gRPC that help you get more out of it. These add-ons are a collection of standardized RPC services with pre-built implementations that you can install on your servers to get some really nice functionality out of them. Collectively, you can think of these as being sort of a standard library of gRPC services. In each programming language, these are generally provided as a collection of separate packages. Once you pull your desired package in as a dependency, you generally just need to call a single function from it to install it on your server. So the first of these services is health checking. Uh, REST doesn't have a standardized way to say that a server is fully up and running. Instead, people tend to define their own ad hoc handlers for health. This is why Kubernetes liveness probes make you configure an HTTP path and headers, which are specific to the REST service you're health checking. But gRPC health checking is standardized, and it's actually been integrated into Kubernetes liveness checks. Uh, Kubelet will make health check queries to your server pod using this standardized protocol. Uh, another client to gRPC health checking is a CLI tool called gRPC debug, and you can see an example usage of that there. Uh, gRPC debug is going to feature pretty heavily in these slides. The next standard service is pretty interesting because it's very gRPC specific. Uh, part of gRPC's speed is due to its compact binary representation on the wire, protocol buffers. But this means that the on the wire representation is not human readable. And it's not even machine readable if you don't have access to the schema. So in order to manually send RPCs with tools like grp curl or Postman, you either need to have the API schema definitions on your local file system so these tools can read them, and that can be a real pain, or you can use our standardized reflection service. The reflection protocol is a way for GR a gRPC server to tell clients the exact API definitions of all of the services exported by that server. This allows clients to use these APIs without having the API definitions beforehand. So in this gRP curl invocation here, without the API schema, we actually cannot translate the request message JSON into the binary representation. So the CLI tool will first look up the schema from the server and then serialize the request message. And a similar process happens on the return path. Continuing on the debugging path, we have channel Z. Channel Z gives you, a detail, gives you very detailed information about the channels, subchannels, and sockets in your servers and clients. Imagine flapping network connections, faulty routers, and laggy WANs, like we're experiencing right now. Uh, Channel Z will help you figure things like that out. You might actually want to install this on a process that's uh, otherwise just a gRPC client, not a gRPC server, like the box on the far left here. If you do that, you may consider only exposing the service over localhost of the pod, not externally. This will allow you to kubectl exec into the pod and do your debugging, but <clears throat> it won't allow external users to access it. Uh, gRPC debug is the main tool for interacting with channel Z, so if you're only exposing channel Z over localhost, you might consider pre-installing gRPC debug in your containers or using it from a Kubernetes debug container. So the final standardized service we'll go over is also for debugging, and it's also queryable via gRPC debug, but it is a little bit more advanced. CSDS, the client status discovery service, is used to query XDS state. As a very brief overview, gRPC implements much of the same service mesh functionality as Envoy. And to program gRPC clients and servers with this service mesh traffic management functionality, the gRPC library itself speaks the XDS protocol, the same protocol that Envoy uses to retrieve uh, config from, for example, Istio. So it's often useful to see exactly what the service mesh config that a gRPC client or server has received from the control plane, especially when things aren't working as expected. In these cases, you'll want your service mesh participating gRPC applications to export the CSDS service. The setup here looks very similar to channel Z, so all of the same recommendations about deployment apply for CSDS as well. So that was a whirlwind tour of the gRPC standard services. The functionality represented here is really useful, so I'd encourage you to try all of these services out. And while you're at it, engage with the gRPC project in any of the ways listed here. Uh, be sure to check out the gRPC project's maintainer talk on Friday at 4 p.m., where we'll be looking back at the past 10 years of gRPC. And of course, if you have any questions about the services I mentioned here today, or absolutely anything else about gRPC, feel free to just pull me aside in the hall. Thank you.